And uh, today, okay, the title of these two lectures is Rethink It It All. One and two, then um, my, my boss, Angelo Bassi, tomorrow will give the, the last two lectures. Okay, um, so what I want to try to, to discuss with you today is uh, a, a problem that also yesterday uh, Professor Romero Izard uh, pointed out. And this is why we don't have superposition at the macroscopic level. So this is the big question uh, we want to try to, to answer today. So superpositions. at macroscopic level. level. So why we don't have it? Or even better, what actually quantifies a system to be classical or to be quantum? So to, let's start to, to think, to, to categorize uh, things. So we start saying, okay, this is my microscopic world. Then we have our macroscopic world. And uh, so this is, will be the error of the dimension of our systems. So for example, here we have uh, a single atom. And on the other side, uh, that's for example, that's me. Okay. So clearly, whatever is on the left uh, is considered to be quantum. Whatever is on the right instead is considered to be classical. So there is already something that we are creating some division among these, these two uh, worlds. But what happens to something which is in between? For example, what happens to a cat? Which is here. So, well, um, for example, Weinberg in some way described this situation and described the, uh, the interpretation, the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics as a little bit uh, confusing because there is some mysterious division somewhere here that is dividing the classical and the quantum world. So what is microscopic and what is macroscopic. But it's not really clear who is actually performing the measurement, so who is the classical object that looks at the quantum one and who instead is measured. So obviously one can think about, okay, but I am also made of atoms, so why should I not be described in the really same terms as the single atom? So the quantum, quantum theory is linear, so there is no evidence why I should stop describing things in a way and starting to describe it in another way at a certain point of complexity of dimension of my system. And so what I would like to have is a full, unique, quantum description. Okay. But then again, who is measuring what? Okay, uh, there is the argument, we, uh, we already see it in these days, of uh, the environment. The environment is actually measuring our systems and uh, so the coherence is actually what makes our macroscopic systems classical. So we don't have superpositions. And so, okay, so, but where, where should they put the environment? Something of this sort is this environment. Or we're starting here. So again, there is some, uh, the division is still not really clear how this should work. Um, and so we still have some, some problems. So at the end of the day, this is the quantum measurement problem. So why a system is classical or why is quantum? 
Okay, and, and this is actually uh, the argument I, I, I will discuss with you. So this is the quantum measurement problem. Okay, so let, let's go back to, to the environment. So is really the coherence not enough to describe this, this transition from quantum to classical? Well, actually, it's not. Um, let, let, me, let me take a, a, an example. OK, so we start from a state, psi, which is in a superposition of 0 and 1. Let's say this is just uh, the cut on the left, the cut on the right. Uh, the corresponding statistical operator, we can construct it just in this way, okay? And what we have is the following. We have the populations, so these are the probability of having the state on zero and one. And then we have the coherences, and these are at the end of the day, the interference fringes in an interferometric experiment. So this is actually what is quantum there, OK? So if we represent this state on the basis of 0 and 1, which is the most natural basis for this kind of problem, what we have is the, the uh, density matrix is of this form. So again, populations and the coherences. So the action of the coherence is to take rho and send it to rho prime, which is, in, is the same just with, without the off diagonal terms. And so we have something of this sort. Okay, so now we have half a probability of having the state in zero, half a probability of having one. And this actually corresponds to a statistical operator of the form zero, zero plus one, one. Okay? Okay, nice. Now, let's consider a, a different system, a different example. Um, let's suppose of having a system prepared with the pro one half probability in the state plus and one half of probability in the state minus. And these are just, again, superpositions of zero and one. Uh, sorry, this is plus and this is minus. OK? Then I construct the statistical operator corresponding to, to this state. So this will be rho is equal to 1 half plus 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 minus minus. OK? But then if we are going to represent it, that state there, again on the same basis, what happens is that we end up with a density matrix, which is of this form. Wow. We have the same result as we have it here. But these are two completely different systems. So in one case, I don't have superpositions. The coherence killed it. In the other case, I have superpositions. Still, the coherence that doesn't, that, uh, didn't act on my system, but yet, my, my state is the same. Okay, so you see that the coherence on a, on a particular basis is not sufficient to describe my, my, uh, my effect, so to solve my quantum measurement problem. And this is because my description is on the basis of the row. And uh, since 
I don't want to have superluminous signaling. In terms of flow, I, I need to have a linear dynamics. And this obviously doesn't, doesn't solve my problem. And we will see it uh, more in detail uh, now. OK, so how, how, do we, how do we solve the problem? There are various uh, ways to do it. And uh, one, one of them is, uh, is given by uh, the collapse models. Well, the statistical operator actually is also the same. If you expand that in terms of 0 and 1, you will get the same. Because if you take this one, which still describes a superposition, and you act with the coherence on this basis, then you are not changing anything. But you still have a superposition. So that's the problem. So the cat is still both alive and dead. OK, so collapse models. So collapse models wants to put together uh, so this microscopic and the macroscopic world in a unique, unified description. And to do that, uh, we just uh, go a little bit back and try to understand which is the, the roof of the problem. Okay, so the point is that in quantum mechanics we have actually two kind of dynamics. The first one is given by the Schrodinger equation, which is linear and deterministic. So given a uh, state psi at time zero, then I know exactly how this is, which is the evolution of this psi. Then obviously, there is some randomness in the outcomes. But this is not the, what Schrodinger equation describes. It's a linear uh, differential equation. So it's linear and de deterministic. Then we have, on the other hand, uh, the wave packet reduction. OK, this is the mass. So here, this, this is dynamics. Instead, is nonlinear. And it's also stochastic. I do a measurement, I get a single state, which is chosen randomly. So this is the stochastic part. And it's, not, it's, it's chosen among, not in a superposition among, so it's not a superposition of, of uh, the eigenstates of the operator I'm measuring, but it's a single of, of, of that hypothesis. And that's in the linearity part. OK. so. The idea of collapse models is to bring together these pieces. OK, so we want to construct, to modify the Schrodinger equation, adding some terms which are both nonlinear and stochastic. Yes? Could you explain more about wave packet reduction, how, how, how it works? How it works? Yeah. So this is the, is, is the measurement pro process in, in, in quantum mechanics. OK. Um, So we have a state, psi, uh, and some operator, O. And we do a measurement of the operator O on the state psi. So what we can do, always, is to describe the state 
as a linear superposition with some probabilities. Okay? So, sorry, uh, let's put it in this, okay, this way. Okay, so we are describing on the basis of the operator O, our state, okay? So you can do the same with the operator. So J, this will be the eigenvalues, and then we have the projectors on that state. Then we do the measurement. So the operator O is acting on Psi. Obviously, this is not an eigenstate, it's a superposition. So I will not get O something times Psi. I will get something different. But the question is, okay, after I apply this, which will be the state in, instead of, of, of Psi? I will change my state. And that's the collapse of the wave function, so the wave packet reduction, okay? So I will get the state OI with a probability PI, and I will get, uh, as outcome of the measurement, the eigenvalue OI. Yes? Okay? Nice. Okay. So now, uh, a question is more or less natural, no? Should I really mess with both these properties, both the nonlinearity and the stochastic uh, features of, of this kind of, of dynamics? Cannot just make some linear and stochastic modifications or nonlinear but deterministic? Okay, so let's try. Let's see what, what happens. So we start with linear and stochastic. Okay, so if I take something of this sort, then I end up of having the same kind of dynamics I have for the, the coherence, I have due to the environment, okay? So um, I can describe everything in terms, for example, of an Hamiltonian, which is the Schrodinger Hamiltonian plus a potential, which is stochastic. Okay, but in this way, still, I don't have the, uh, the collapse of my wave function. So the effect of this kind of dynamics is still that of leading me this state here in this. And so still, I have the same problems as for uh, the Huygens response. So this kind of dynamics doesn't actually solve any problem. Okay, let's try the other one. So nonlinear, uh, but deterministic. Well. In this case, I have a big problem. I do superluminal signaling. Okay, how, how, how do I, sorry, show you this. So consider, uh, uh, entangled pair, okay, we have our system which is described by, it's a system of two photons which are entangled and a photon is sent to Bob, a photon is sent to Alice, okay, and uh, the full state rho A, B is described in these terms, ij, and then I have so, bar. Okay. 
Okay? These are, I choose these states here as the eigenstates of uh, an operator that Alice can, uh, Alice can perform a measurement. And this is the operator X. Okay? Then Alice have also uh, another operator, and this is Y. This can be, for example, Pauli matrices. And in terms of this Y, I can just rewrite this data in that basis, and I have something completely similar, just with a tilde here, and then instead of X, I have Ys. Okay? So this is the part of Alice, and this is Bob. And that's it, okay? Now, let's assume that Alice makes uh, a measurement of X or of the Y operator. So in that case, the, the Alice part of the system will collapse as well as, as, as that of Bob in one of the eigenstates of X or of Y. So, for example, Alice measures X, then Bob's state will be, so Bob's state will be of this form. Okay, but then this, this state here evolves due to this uh, nonlinear and, and deterministic evolution, and so after some time, this will be just xi of t, xi bar of t. Okay. What happens if Alice instead measures Y? I have something similar. Let's put a prime here. Okay? And this will evolve again with this nonlinear deterministic evolution to Bob prime of the But now, what, what's the trick? The trick is that this state here is not, ca can be different from this one because my, my evolution is nonlinear, so it depends on actually on which is the initial state. So, which is a particular initial state. So, this row here is not equivalent to this one. And so, what the, the trick is okay, I encode, Alice encodes the information zero in X, encodes the information Y, uh, one in Y. Okay, I want to send uh, this information, 0, 0, 1. I do two measurements of X and one of Y on three different pairs of uh, entangled, entangled photos. Then Bob measures an expectation value of some particular operator with his data, but the, so the, let's say, uh, the expectation value of this will be different if Felix measured X or measured Y. And so in this way, one can actually perform superluminar signaling. Clearly, we, we don't want this. So again, we have problems with this kind of, of, uh, of transformation of, of dynamics. Okay, so we end up with Sorry, sorry. Can I don't know what you mean with, with deterministic. Deterministic? Here. Uh, why you, 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 you don't say that it's deterministic? So, is described still by, uh, by the Schrodinger equation? Time evolution operator? By time evolution? 
So, for, for example, okay, an, uh, uh, an example of, of that dynamics could be uh, so of this form. So, we have the Hamiltonian, okay, and this is, let's put it here, the T. So, this is the Schrodinger part of the equation, okay. Do you recognize it as a Schrodinger equation? Yes, nice. And then here I put, for example, an operator, generic, but then this is nonlinear in the psi. But still, there is nothing that is stochastic here. Okay? So that is the case of that kind of dynamics. Okay? So, what we end up is that modifications of uh, Schrodinger equation that can actually solve the measurement problem need to have two characteristics. And these are the nonlinearity and the stochasticity of the equation. And so, for example, a kind of equation that solves the problem is of this form. So here, this kind of equation is the Schrodinger equation, then this is the Newtonian, then we have another operator, and a part which depends on the expectation value of that operator. So this actually leads to the collapse of the wave function in a coherent way, and this kind of equation actually solves uh, the measurement problem. Okay, so we, do we have questions at this stage? No? So maybe we take five minutes and then we go on with uh, the rest of the lecture. Okay? Thank you.